So what we're going to do now is create a very simple Java servlet and test it and run it in a real servlet container. In order to create a Java servlet, it needs to be contained within a particular type of project in Eclipse, uh, uniquely a dynamic web project. So first we'll create a new web project. I go to the menu, I choose File, New, Dynamic Web Project. I give my project a name. In this case, we'll name it Simple Web Project. I want to make sure that the server target runtime is appropriate. This gives us the appropriate artifacts necessary to compile our code and run our code. It gives us heads up about compile errors, about version errors. And so I chose as my target runtime my JBoss v5 server. My servlet API is at level 2.5. Again, this affects how the tool is going to validate and compile my code. So once I'm done making this initial configuration, I click on Next. I make sure that my Java source code is where I expect it to be. So when my code is compiled, it's going to go to a particular location. I click Next. I'm presented with the web module page in this wizard. It allows me to specify the context route. And notice I have a selection box selected by default to generate the web XML deployment descriptor. So we can take a look at that. I'm all done setting the configuration parameters for my very simple web project. So I'm going to click Finish. And the tool is going to generate a lot of code, including the deployment descriptor and the structure of a dynamic web project targeted to run on the JBoss test server. In order to test my application on the JBoss server, I need to tell the JBoss server to publish my application when the server is started. So from my server's view, I'm going to right click on the JBoss server, the test server that I have here, and I'm going to choose Add and Remove. I'm going to add my simple web project to the server so that when I issue commands to publish to the JBoss server or when I start up the JBoss server from inside of Eclipse, this project will be included in the application set that JBoss is going to allow me to test from inside of Eclipse. Now within our project, we're going to create our very simple servlet. Okay, already we've got some contents in our web project just by creating the project itself. Eclipse has loaded the appropriate Java runtime resources necessary and associated this code with our JBoss test server. If I expand the project, I see a link to something called Deployment Descriptor. This is my WebXML file. If I double click on this, it will open up the Deployment Descriptor in standard XML format. You see that the name of the file is XML. In a lot of these editors, there's two different ways or many different ways of looking at your code. This particular editor allows me to see XML code in a simplified XML tree hierarchy. And there's also a source tab here for viewing the XML source if that's what you're more familiar with. If I expand Web INF, I see that there's a link to Web XML. This is actually two links to essentially the same file. If I double click there, it opens the same file. Now what I want to do is write a basic HTTP servlet in my web project. To do this, I'll right click on my project by its name and choose New and choose Servlet. 
Java code is organized into packages. So I'll actually create a Java package for my servlet by typing into the field the name of the package that I want created within my code. I need to give every Java class a name. I will call this servlet, as we saw in the example, hello servlet. By default, because I've chosen the tool to generate HTTP servlet code, by default the tool picks up the expected parent class or superclass in Java, which is HTTP servlet from the javax.servlet.http package within Java. That's all I need to do. All I did was name the servlet and say that it is a servlet. I can click Finish here. Let's see what the tool generates for us. Automatically, the tool created the necessary Java class. Automatically, the tool extended the appropriate superclass. If I hover over the definition of that superclass, you can see that the context-sensitive help actually shows me what package this superclass is in. Everything in Java is case sensitive. If I hover over the name of my Java class, hello servlet, it shows me that it is packaged within simple dot servlet dot hello servlet, hello servlet being the name of my uh, class and the name of my file. The wizard stubbed out my package statement. It stubbed out the appropriate import statements. It stubbed out the appropriate implemented methods from the HTTP servlet class. It gave me a serializable class object. Um, it created the constructor, the default constructor, which is simply a call out to the supers uh, constructor. And it stubbed out the do get methods, the do post methods that we are expected to implement ourselves. A, a note is made to as a task, this is part of Eclipse's templates, to mark auto-generated code as a task for you to attend to later. But all of our code is generated without having to do anything. The really hard part is actually, at, from a business standpoint, looking at what we want to do within our do-get method what we want to do within our do post method.